Hey everybody, this is Patrick Ryan, Education Coordinator at the Buffalo History Museum, and today we're filming our EOS podcast at some of Buffalo's historic grain elevators. The city of Buffalo has always been known for its rich industrial history and its role as a major American port city. Located at the mouth of Lake Erie, Buffalo was chosen to become the terminus of the now legendary Erie Canal. After its completion in 1825, it only took seven years for the once small Buffalo Creek settlement to become a thriving center of trade. By the 1830s, Buffalo became deeply invested in the grain industry, and over 170,000 bushels of wheat passed through the Queen City every year. The collection and moving of such an extensive amount of grain was incredibly laborious, and usually a job filled by immigrants. That was until Buffalo entrepreneur Joseph Dart and engineer Robert Dunbar devised a solution. Together, the two men developed the first ever grain elevator along the Buffalo waterfront. In 1843, Dart's grain elevator was used for the first time, and now it only took a handful of hours to unload grain off of visiting merchant vessels. Post-Civil War Buffalo was constantly building and designing new grain elevators along the Lake Erie waterfront, and by the 1880s, one grain silo could hold up to one million bushels of grain. From 1890 to 1930, the Queen City entered its most profound industrial renaissance. By the 1920s, the city of Buffalo handled almost 300 million bushels of grain, making it the largest grain shipping outfit in the United States. Coupled with the influx in grain production, Buffalo also surpassed Minneapolis as the country's flour-making capital. The reason was twofold. Shipping from Buffalo was cheaper than many other cities, and the access to numerous grain elevators along the waterfront made it infinitely easier for visiting merchants. This meteoric rise in business, however, required new, safer ways to store grain near the waterfront. 19th century grain elevators, while they were certainly a technological breakthrough at the time, were made of wood and susceptible to fire. In 1899, for example, a large grain elevator that was erected just four years prior burned to the ground, in the process destroying 8 million board feet of timber. While steel and concrete elevators already existed, the widespread construction of them didn't start until the turn of the 20th century. Some of the first notable elevators in Buffalo that were made of steel were the Great Northern and Electric Elevators. These newly constructed complexes avoided issues like rodents and insects that had plagued early wooden structures. Three of the more famous elevators that use this design in Buffalo are the Cargool Pool Elevator, the American Grain Complex, and of course, the General Mills Plant. The Cargill Pool Plant was constructed at 1489 Furman Boulevard in 1925, but was originally owned by the Saskatchewan Cooperative Elevator Company. The facility itself is 173 feet tall and has a holding capacity of over 2 million bushels of grain. In 1964, after passing hands numerous times, including a brief stint under the Pillsbury umbrella, the elevator complex was purchased by the Cargill Company. Cargill eventually closed the factory, leaving the building abandoned until 2013 when an investor purchased the factory for $475,000. 87 Child Street is home to yet another historic elevator facility, the American Grain Complex. Also known as the American for short, the complex served as both a grain elevator and flour milling factory. The complex consists of five buildings, the elevator building, flour building, office building, marine tower, and annex. Last owned by Conagra Foods in 2001, the complex was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2012. One of the only still active grain elevators in the Buffalo area is, of course, the General Mills plant. The plant is perhaps the most iconic of Buffalo's waterfront structures, and the scent of breakfast cereal can be smelled almost anywhere within city limits. The Frontier Elevator Company was the first to build on the lot in 1886, renting out the elevators that they constructed there. In 1903, Washburn Crosby began to pay Frontier Elevator to use their complex, and just four years later purchased the entire operation. By 1913, the plant was the fourth largest milling operation in the United States. Washburn Crosby eventually changed their name to General Mills in 1928, and the introduction of Cheerios and Wheaties helped solidify their position as one of the Queen City's chief industries. In 2016, General Mills reinvested in their Buffalo Complex, which is now the nation's oldest cereal plant.